So my watch says it is 11 a.m. Welcome everyone to uh, this week's Art Starts Explores, um, our province at play, our online version of our free weekly workshop for families. Uh, as always, I like to uh, oh, introduce myself. My name is Kay Slater. I'm the preparator and gallery coordinator at Art Starts in School. And joining us in the chat channel is Leah Horlick, the program manager at Art Starts. While I am working and I am focused with my camera facing down here, uh, I can't see your comments, but Leah is here and is watching um, and is ready to answer any of your questions. We would love to see any of the things that you are making as you make along. And even if you're watching this as an archive, if you're not, if you're not watching this live with us right now, but if you watch it when it's archived later, and then you decide to take the time out to make, we would still love to see what you make on your own time. So reach out to Leah if you have any comments or if you have any questions or if you want to share. So this week you can see we are going to be focused on collage. Last week we wrapped up our two-part uh, series on alphabets and that is now available on YouTube and in, a, and in our Facebook um, videos as well as on our website at artstarts.com slash explores dash online. And so uh, you can always go back and check out our previous weeks. I'm going to take this down because it is 11 o'clock. I'm going to take the speech bubble off of my mini host here. There we go. And uh, as always, I like to start our Explorers programs by reviewing the three rules of Explorers. And these are rules that we just like to have in mind while we are creating together, whether we are in person whether we are creating in the gallery, um, we always like to uh, go over these things and have them in mind as we're creating. So the first one is respect. And so we practice respect. We're not perfect at it. Some weeks we're gonna be better at it than others. We practice respect by checking in with ourselves, with each other. Um, hopefully um, you have some other people that you could be making with. Hopefully you are making with uh, your family or your guardians but maybe you're making with your neighbors or with your class. Uh, but if you're making by yourself, check in with yourself um, and, and, and check in with other people when you're finished your project. Go, go share what you made. Um, we're gonna respect our tools, uh, whether that's we're gonna be using our tools in a few different ways this week, maybe not the way they were intended, but we still wanna be safe, mindful, patient, um, and share our tools. And then lastly, uh, I have on this list is the land and by respecting the land I mean I want to acknowledge that we um, that specifically me as the host this week I am hosting from my art studio which is on unceded or stolen Coast Salish territory and specifically I want to name the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh people who have been guardians and protectors and who are guardians and protectors of this land. And I'm trying to do my very best to be a respectful guest while they patiently let me be on these lands while they, while they um, are here and doing the work. And so I want to acknowledge them before I get started on our work today. Um, and I always do, uh, at the start of these videos, I always acknowledge where I'm at but you can also practice right respect by figuring out where you're situated um, and share that with your friends and family when you learn um, so that you can you can always be putting that into your own practice the second thing we like to do is that nothing is for keeps and so uh, everything that we do this week is not for um, for keeps we're not going to put it on the fridge afterwards we're not going to put it up on a shelf Everything that we try is just to try it out. So when we're finished, we're going to take it apart and we're going to put it away. So whether that's we're uh, assembling objects today or whether or not we glue something together or we draw a picture, at the very end, we're going to recycle it. We're going to get rid of it. Just trying things um, and that nothing is for keeps. And the nothing is for keeps rule is really easy when you keep in mind our third rule, which is no expectations. All ideas are good ideas. Whatever you make this week, it might be turning out really, really good, but it might be turning out really, really not the way that you had hoped for. And that can cause disappointment. So if one week you try it and, it and it disappoints you, maybe the next week, don't have a picture in your head of how it's going to turn out. Just try 
doing the things that we're practicing today, and then practice surprise. You won't know what will happen if you don't know, if you don't have a plan, if you don't have that final goal. And so anything that happens is good. And those are the three rules of explorers that we like to keep in mind. Okay, so I'm gonna put them to the side because they're, they're with us throughout the workshop, but I just wanna have a bit more room. I'm gonna move the sandwich board over to the side collage. I'm gonna move mini me over to the side, uh, mini host, um, and get started on collage. Okay, so the word collage, you will hear it a lot. A lot of people like to use collage as a really easy art project to just add hands-on making. Um, if you're ever at an art workshop where there's a lot of magazines around, they might encourage you to cut out different pieces and then stick them all together. And the act of taking pieces from different places and sticking them, them on the page, that is collage. And while the practice of sticking things and putting things from uh, different compositions or from different places or things that didn't necessarily go together at the beginning and putting them all together. That has been practiced around the world, many different cultures for hundreds and hundreds of years. But in Western art making, um, the whole novelty, the whole distinct practice, this practice of sticking paper to, on a page or sticking paper together, that word collage comes from the French word um, colle or collé, which means to glue or to paste. And so in French, papier collé was this term that, um, that modern Western artists at the start of the 20th century, so in the 19, in 1900, so a whole 120 years ago, uh, they were, they were uh, in Western art, were starting to do this as a specific practice called collage. And so when we, when we think about uh, sticking things down, there's a real permanence. You're, you're, you're kind of, you're stuck with it, right? That's what, that's something that we say in English. You're stuck with it when you stick it down. You can't get it up once the glue has dried. And that kind of runs practice, or sorry, runs, runs counter. It's different than what we're trying to do at Explorers, which is nothing is for keeps. So even if you decide to glue something down and make something permanent this week, keep in mind that the thing that we're sticking down, we're still going to get rid of at the end. Um, so I encourage you that if you happen to have some sticky notes, and if you've been joining us for the last three months, um, you know that I love my sticky notes. I love to make notes for them. I like to draw on them. I like to cut them up. They're so useful. And the other part is, is that because of the adhesive or glue that they have on the back here, it allows us to still practice collage, which is pasting, right? Which is sticking, which is gluing things together, but it isn't so permanent, right? It allows us to reposition it, to cut it into pieces. Here, I'll just do that because I like to rip paper and I've given myself permission in the studio so you can rip it up. You Now you've got two stickies, right? And so we can be practicing collage without it being permanent, without it being for keeps when we use stickies. Another way that we can be doing this, and um, when we practice collage, and as I said, I, I think that it's going to be, pro it's, it's common enough um, in my experience, especially in BC schools, that um, at one point or another, somebody's going to encourage you to try a collage. And if you have adults that are making with you, the likelihood that somebody in the room or in the house or in the building or in your school has made a collage is quite high. It's, it's a practice that people do. And the problem with it being um, a practice that so many people do is that it, it's kind of rushed. A lot of people just go, okay, well, I just got to stick a bunch of things together. Um, and maybe there's, a, maybe there's a goal. Maybe what you're supposed to be doing is, is you're supposed to be finding things that are in common and sticking them together. But the problem is, is that if we're just thinking about the end goal, if we're just thinking about the why uh, we're putting things together and not the how, then sometimes collage can, even if it's supposed to be for keeps, can look really messy and can look kind of rushed. And, and for me, at least, as an artist who's been practicing for more than 20 years, I feel really dissatisfied. I really feel um, 
that my collages don't look the way I want them to if I rush. And so when we are doing collage, one of the great things is that we can actually put the glue and the paste aside, get rid of the glue and just try it with all the pieces and imagine the glue when we're putting those things together that that's where you want to stick them. But it gives you this freedom to be able to move it wherever you want around the page without being worried that you made a mistake and now it's stuck there and you can't move it. Uh, it gives you a bit more time to do some of that deep looking so that you can really be looking at shapes. Um, and so what we're gonna be doing today is a, a kind of collage, but we're not gonna be doing it with glue. And that's why I gave you all those words at the beginning this week is that collage, it actually means to glue, but Kay, what are you, what are you talking about? Why are we going to not use glue? And that's why we are going to be practicing setting up collage and thinking about collage before we actually glue anything together. Okay. So I've started to cut some of these pieces here. Um, and I'll get back to these. I'll, I'll continue to cut as we go along, but I want to get started actually making, putting some things together. So the first thing that we're going to try this week is we're going to collage with something called ready-mades. Ready-mades are things and objects that you can find that are, are already done. You don't have to make anything with them. For example, this pen, that's a ready-made. It's all of a sudden, it sure it's a pen. Yes, you can write with it, but right now it's a ready-made. It's an object we're going to use for our collage. So find something that's nearby. Find, uh, find something that you can pick up and you can hold in your hand and take a minute to really look at it. Notice as many things as you can about that object. So for me, I notice that this is red. I notice that it is straight, so it's a line. I notice that this red is darker than this red. I notice that this point is skinnier, is smaller, is thinner than this point. I notice that this point is the same size as this point. I notice that there's a white line right there inside the pen. So by doing some deep looking at the object that you picked up, it's not just a pen anymore, right? It's not just something you can write with. It's so many other things. And that's the cool thing about working with ready mades is that once you really look at it, it becomes things more than itself. It becomes a color, it becomes a shape. It becomes an object that you can use for your art making. So what I found, okay, I'm gonna move some of these things aside just because I know that the contrast when you're looking is better when it's there isn't a whole bunch of clutter. So I'm gonna move my collage work down here <clears throat> because we're gonna get back to it. And I'm going to show you some of the things that I found around the house. And while I pull these over, if you want to go looking for a couple of things that you can find, bring them back and let's try to make this collage out of whatever you can find. So that's what I found. Why did I put them in this direction? Why did I put them down like this? The 
reason that I wanted to put them this way was because I wanted to find all the ways that I could find lines. And so I decided I would line them all up, line them all up this way so that I could put them out and actually see how they're all lines. And if I'm just looking at these objects, I'm not seeing a pen, I'm not seeing a comb, I'm not seeing batteries, instead I'm seeing lines. Now all of a sudden we can look at these and go, this is a skinny line, this is a thin line, this is a thin line, this is a thin line, this is kind of a, a, a fatter line, a bigger line here, and a skinnier line here. This is a medium size, especially if you're going to compare it. This is a short line. These are the longest lines. This is a long line, right? This, this chain that I found. And so all of a sudden, they're not just forks. They're not just objects. They are lines. And that's important to recognize because when we start to put all these things together, if, you, if you're thinking in terms of lines, you can go, oh, I need a long line. And all of a sudden, this isn't a chopstick. This is the long line you were looking for. And so we're just reorganizing our thoughts. We're reorganizing these objects into a system that works for the art making that we're doing. But we don't just have to do it like that. Now we can do is, uh, what we can do is go, okay, well, I want to look for all the round things. And just by moving some of the objects that we found, we can start deep looking for roundness in these objects. So I found some round shapes in the ready-mades that I found. I've got some lines, but then I've got these other cool shapes that, um, that aren't just straight lines or circles. I've got this curved line just by flipping, right? Just by flipping a ready-made on its side, just by flipping an object on its side, you can start looking at it in a different way. So I've got a curved line. I've got two squares. I've got this really, I've got a line and a circle. I've got both this, this um, oval shape, if you're looking down this way, but I've also got a duck, if you look at it this way. I've also got this funny furry texture, right? So really take a moment to look at the objects that you found and start to classify them or put them in sections Right? Put them in groups based on the shapes or the things that you notice that they have in common. You could do it for color. You could do it for shape. You could do it for size. You could do it for anything. However you want to define your categories is going to be helpful when we start uh, looking at collage. And so if you think about it, when you're starting to cut out magazine pieces and you're putting them together as a, a collage, if you're thinking about those objects as just a, a, what's in the picture, and so let's say the theme is, um, I don't know, a sunny day outside, and you just cut out pictures of people in bathing suits or playing in the sand or a sky, and you're just kind of mashing those pictures together, then they're not necessarily going to, they're not, they're not going to have the same consideration as if when you cut out the sky, um, you're cutting it out in a shape that maybe is similar to the other shapes that you have. Or um, if you have a specific kind of blue, maybe you can go looking through your magazine for other kinds of blues that are similar. Or maybe you only want one blue in your uh, final collage, right? So thinking about these things as you go along is going to make a more satisfying collage. Okay, so have you organized the things that you found into categories? I'm going to do color. So I've got red, and I've got purple, and I've got black, put those up there, and I've got white, and I've got yellow, and I've got silver. I have a bunch of silver things. Oh, I'm going to put that in the black category. Over, and then green. Put that right there. All right. So now we have all these different objects, and we're going to start creating um, a picture. And if you have made with us before, uh, you might have your viewfinder ready to go, right? And the viewfinder is just a piece of cardboard that we've cut a rectangle out of to make a frame. 
which can help us when we are creating something to look through and actually see what it would look like if it was captured in a frame. You can also use it as a frame. So if your viewfinder is big enough, you could put it down and start building a composition within um, your, uh, your viewfinder. My viewfinder is pretty small and I would like to use a bunch of these objects. So I'm not gonna use my viewfinder right now. I'm gonna have it handy to be able to look through, but I'm not gonna use it as my frame. If I really need a frame, I mean, I could also make a frame out of some ready-mades. So I've got some paper here. Why don't I define my frame by putting down some paper? And remember, because we're just trying, because whatever happens, we're learning, we're practicing surprise. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay that this wasn't a perfect square. These weren't cut exactly the same. But now I have my frame based on the outside of that paper, right? And now I can start positioning things. Now, if you don't have a theme, if you don't really know what you're going to be making, it can be hard to get started. But if you don't have glue, you're not stuck if you play something and you don't actually like how it looks. So I'm gonna turn off my voice for a second and I'm just going to place some of these objects on the page. I encourage you to do the same thing, whether you have a frame or whether you've just taken a section of floor or the table, um, start putting some of your objects together and see what happens. Don't forget, it's not glued down, so you can move things around however you want. If you don't like a shape, move it around. Okay, I like it, I like this. Another word that I wanted to tell you about when you're looking at collage is the word assemblage. So both of those words are French, and I said that collage means pa papier collé in French, which is stuck or um, glued paper. But another word that we use when we're looking at collage is that word assemblage. And assemblage means assembling. That means bringing things together. And so while we're not sticking anything on the page, we are performing an act of bringing things together that weren't necessarily all together uh, or didn't belong together until we gave them context, until we put them within our composition, until we drew with them, until we made a sculpture with them, until we made a scene with them. And so this act of bringing things together that don't necessarily belong or didn't, um, they weren't part of the same family or group or categorization, or even you wouldn't even call these art supplies necessarily, but I do because I'm using them for art. And so that's the whole idea of deep thinking, of really looking at an object and going, sure, this is a fork, and sure, I would find this in the kitchen, but is it still a fork? Does it have to be a fork? Is it only for eating when it's not in the kitchen? If I have permission to take something out of a different room and bring it into my art making, what are the possibilities? What are, what is it made of? What shape is it? What color is it? 
how does it reflect the light? See how many questions and really challenge yourself. If you're with a friend or a guardian or a parent and um, you could take turns back and forth asking each other questions. So one person goes, okay, what color is this object? And the other person goes, what shape is this object? And then you go back and forth until you can't think of any questions. And, that, and I think it will be hard because there's always more questions that you can ask about um, an object or an idea. And that can be a fun thing to do if you're trying to pass the time, you're waiting to get into the doctor's office, or you're waiting your turn in line to get on the swing set, um, you can play a game of asking questions about an object. Okay, so for my assemblage, do you see the face? And I think I've told you in previous um, workshops before, it's very normal for us, for humans, to like to draw faces, to like to make faces. We see our own face in the mirror, we talk and we sign to other people's faces, we're looking at each other's faces all the time. So it makes sense that when we start to try some of these things that it's very familiar or comfortable to look at a face. And so did you see, I've got some hair, I've got a winking eye, right? I've showed that the eye is winking. If you, if you look at your eye in the mirror when you wink, or blink, you close your eye so it's not necessarily round, but it's flat. And then I've got a square eye to the side. I really like that there was a number in the center of this eye, so it kind of looked like the circle with the dot in it. The rabbit became this nose shape that I really liked. And since I was already working with a mustache, the nose came down to the mustache. This cool curved shape that we noticed. Oh, look, see now this character is kind of frowning isn't as happy and then when we turn it down like or we turn it up like this they're happy and then just with the move of one piece they're sad and it completely changed the emotion of the picture that you made if you change just one thing on the assemblage or collage or drawing with the objects that you just made what changes does the collage still look okay and I always encourage you to try that. That's the other great thing about not gluing things down is that you really can go, what happens if? What happens if I turn it this way? Hmm, I didn't really feel like it did anything there. What happens if I turn it this way? Hmm, kind of looks like now that their ear is pierced. And I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't tried that. What if I turn the nose upside down? Hmm, nah, it's all right kind of looks like there's lines underneath these eyes now. And I think I preferred it the other way and I can put it back. And that's the cool thing about practicing collage without glue, right? You still have that opportunity to try things out. Okay, I think I liked it better when this character had an upturned smile. So I'm gonna put it back to the upturned smile. And when I was building this face and I saw this happy face, I decided that the sun was shining. So even though I had this central uh, figure here, I felt like I wanted to bring this in. And because the chain was something that I could really manipulate or move or um, a shape however I wanted, all of a sudden it becomes a sun. The other cool thing about collage and assemblage is that we can do whatever we want. We can add whatever we want to this. So we could go and find Another, we could find some magazines and we could cut some things out, we could add to it. But why couldn't we take a pen or a marker or a pencil crayon and add to our picture? Who says? Who says we can't? I sure don't. So if you have, if you did end up going on a piece of paper, or if you didn't, you could go find a piece of paper now, move your assemblage or your collage or your drawing or your sculpture or take it all apart and then redo it on a piece of paper and see if you can remember or if maybe you decide to do a different idea. And absolutely, like I encourage so much sometimes just to go, okay, what would happen if I started over? So now I've got these lines here. I knew I wanted the green there and I know I want the sun. So I'm gonna leave that. But now I'm going to, I'm gonna reshape everything. I think I'll go like this basically. I did that last time. There you go, I'll go like this. Right, don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of, of 
going ahead and trying something completely different with the same objects. I guarantee you, you'll notice something different every single time. And I've done this a lot, so I'm going pretty fast, but you can go as slow as you want. If the ideas aren't coming fast, you can watch other people who are trying these things. Going fast or slow in art making doesn't make you a good or a bad artist. It just means you're going fast. And so going slow and really thinking through things is just as important as being the first one who can get something finished. I'm not even going to stick to my page. That's okay, right? I'm going to go right off the page. I'm going to use this infinity space because we're just planning. Here you go. I used the same objects. I added another object, but I used the same objects to create a completely different face. And so, yeah, maybe you came up with a really cool um, sculpture. But when we're practicing things not for keeps, we can put it away and we don't have to feel bad about it. Especially if we leave something um, and we go into another room and somebody doesn't know, um, they're trying to be nice and they clean it up. Or we get distracted by something else and somebody needs to move it because they need to have the space. Or for whatever reason, your art making um, activity gets put away. Sure, it can feel, it can feel initially frustrating but if we're just practicing, these things, these things, uh, the experience is what's important, not the final thing that we do. And so it's okay. It's okay if it gets put away. It's okay if it gets taken apart. It's okay if somebody, if your sibling comes in and uh, makes a mess on top of it. It's all right. You can do it again. You can do something different. And it will probably be better. When we're making art making for keeps though, right? We want to um, practice respect by making sure we do put things away and we do, um, we do store our artwork so that people don't accidentally put things um, away that we didn't mean them to, right? But for this stuff, we're just trying. We're just trying. Okay, so I added some grass and I said that this was the sun up here. So why can't I make some sun rays? around the outside, maybe I'll add some extra lines. The chain will move, so that's okay. I can draw in between it. And there you go, right? Now you can take pencil crayons. I mean, this is still an object. Sure, we drew with it, but what if, uh, what if I decide that they're eyebrows? Yeah, oh, I really like that. I, I like that even better. I felt like this was uh, really dark, and now you can really, the, sh the face kind of brightens up. So check it out. Anything that you find in your house or your apartment or your classroom or outside take a nature walk and see if you can find some really interesting looking rocks make sure you look around so that you're not stopping in the middle of a path or you're not blocking somebody who needs to be able to get it along the path especially on the sidewalk because we want to make sure that um, folks with mobility devices or who are on um, using walkers that they have access on the sidewalk right so we want to make sure that we're aware all the time if it's in our yard, if it's on our driveway, we want to ask permission. If it's in a public park, we want to make sure that we're not um, in, in the way or that we have permission. But using chalk to make your border or just bringing your viewfinder with you and bringing out some rocks and trying to make something with the rocks you find. At the beach with seashells, you're making collage. You're making assemblage when you put the shells together and you draw a picture. If you find some branches, some fallen leaves, we want to make sure that we're not we're never picking anything, right? So even if the, if a flower looks really cool, we don't want to pick that flower. We don't want to pick berries. We don't want to um, we don't want to take leaves off of trees. But what if what if we found a flower we really liked and we wanted to make a picture around the flower? That's another way of practicing assemblage. If this was a flower and we couldn't pick it, could you place rocks around the flower to make a picture? Could you move some of the dirt? Could you bring in some fallen leaves or twigs? And we want to respect the space around the flower, right? We don't want to, excuse me, we don't want to wreck the, um, the garden area. But if we really, if we made sure that we were respectful of that plant that we can't move, we could still use that as part of it. And if you are with um, somebody who has a 
camera, you could take a picture of it at the end, which is another way of looking through a viewfinder, right? So that was collage using ready-mades. And if, and if you're making along and this is something that you're really enjoying, you can just keep listening um, or you can watch the rest uh, of what I'm doing and then get back to your assemblage. Just because I'm moving on to a, another thing to try something else doesn't mean that you have to stop making what you're working on or what you're making um, in your space right now. Okay, that. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this paper out because the next thing that we're gonna try are picture morphs. Picture morphs, the idea, so morph um, is just a short for morphology, the idea that you're moving, that you're morphing, that you are manipulating, that something is changing from one state to another. And so if I was to uh, say, I'm going to, I'm going to convert, I'm going to change the state of this page from a piece of paper to a ball, right? I have manipulated, I've changed the state of that flat piece of paper into a ball. So what we're gonna do by using the practice of collage is that we are going to take one picture and we're gonna change it into another. And you might have noticed this in last week's um, alphabet class or uh, alphabet workshop that we did that um, with some of our letters. We took the letters and we turned them into ready-mades, just like the things that we found, but we made our ready-mades that time. Um, same thing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a picture and I'm gonna turn off my voice again for maybe five minutes while I draw a picture. And I encourage you to do the same thing, whatever picture you want of anything it doesn't have to be anything it could just be colors it could just be shapes it could be whatever you want to draw but just draw some marks on a page for maybe the next two minutes and then what we're going to do is we're going to practice the art of collage to turn it into another picture okay for the next two minutes voice off let's try this you want to draw is just fine. It doesn't have to be anything in particular, whatever you want to draw. I'm going to draw for just one more minute. So I was talking about flowers, so I had flowers on the brain, and so I drew uh, kind of this box, this box here that has a bunch of flowers sticking out of it. And you'll notice that I used one of the pieces of paper that I had already drawn on, because remember, it's not for keeps, so it doesn't really matter if it's a perfect piece of paper or not. Um, taking paper from the recycling bin that somebody has already written on or somebody draw, has already uh, made some marks on is great. 
sometimes you can actually take some of those marks and you can incorporate those into your drawing. So all of a sudden your recycling bin becomes a part of the, uh, the art tools that you have, your art supplies, right? Okay, so depending on how comfortable you are with doing this, what you can do is you can either grab a piece of uh, a pair of scissors or ask an adult and you can start cutting up sections of your drawing. And remember, that's why we were just trying to do something really fast and really simple. If you ended up drawing a picture that you liked more than you were expecting and you're not ready to cut it out, that's okay. We'll try again next week or, um, to, to make something that you don't want to keep. Grab another piece of paper and make another picture that you would be okay cutting up. Or try making a copy of the picture that you like that you don't want to cut, right? So you could do that by tracing or you could just by looking and see if you can make the same picture. And now you've got one that you can keep and one that you can cut up. But I really do encourage you that if you made a picture, even if it's really hard, even if you're really nervous because it was really good, um, I promise you that you will be able to make another cool picture, another beautiful picture, another um, really great picture in the future. So if you can, I encourage you to, um, to start cutting up your picture. If you feel really comfortable, I just wanted to acknowledge that can be scary for some people to do this, but if you feel really comfortable and you're like, oh, okay, cutting up my picture, no problem. Well, then the next step, of course, is to start ripping. And you know how much I love to rip paper. And so you could rip it in a really controlled way, nice and slow, or you could just rip it however and see what happens. And this is for the adventurous people who really like to rip up paper and aren't feeling nervous about it at all. And that's okay if that's not you, right? There's lots of different ways that we can be approaching art making. And if that makes you stressed out and nervous, then that's part of the respect that we're, um, that we're practicing. And if your body says that you're not ready to do it, well then we'll try it, we'll try it again next week. It's okay. Lots of different ways to, uh, to try and learn this. So because I, I ended up um, making a lot of this paper upside down, I'm gonna turn it back right side up again, just so I can see all the marks. And sometimes when you're using marker, the marks that are on the back side of the page end up being even more interesting than the marks that have front uh, uh, marks on the front of it, especially when you're just starting ripping, ripping up to see whatever happens. This one, not so much, but I think it was this one. Yeah. So I really like how the color went through this page here and it kind of made a, a light brown and then it had some marks that stick through it. And then this side it's dark and it's cool, but like, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't. I didn't plan to both draw it like that and I didn't plan to rip it like that, but it ended up being really cool. And if I hadn't ripped it up, if I hadn't tried it this way, I wouldn't necessarily have seen that. And that's what I mean by practicing surprise. Okay, almost all flipped over. All right, so those are now my collage ready-mades. So, I decided I would take this piece of paper. This is my frame now. You don't have to use a frame. Um, sometimes, especially when you are using um, a white piece of paper or you're on a dark surface. So if you are on a, um, a wood surface, um, it can be hard, especially when you're working with dark objects or dark uh, pieces of paper for your collage. So uh, bringing over a contrast piece of, uh, of paper. So for this one, I've got the dark green. So bringing in a white piece of paper makes that frame easier. But if you had a white table or a glass table or a beige table, then bringing in a black piece of paper or a gray piece of paper or a white piece of paper that even that you colored in a dark color, just so that there was that difference, that can be easier when you start making um, and planning out your collages to be able to see uh, where the edge of your paper is, but also the difference between what you're adding to the paper and the paper itself. So whatever you have on hand. For this, if we're just practicing and you just grab something from the recycling bin and both the paper you're using is white like mine, um, the, sorry, white like mine, and then the paper that you drew on is white, that's fine, we're just practicing. Uh, but when you start making collage um, in earnest, with, for real, for keeps, sometimes doing that kind of setup can really help. And maybe it doesn't help for you. I want to hear if it doesn't help for you and you have a different way of handling it or you tried it, tell me about it. I want to know. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to look at the parts from our previous drawing as ready-mades and we are going to form a new picture out of the objects that we had and that's how we're making a collage, right? If we were cutting this out of a magazine ad or an article or a picture, we'd be taking those objects, we'd be taking those pictures and we'd be putting them back together in our own picture. For this one we've made our own but there's no reason why I couldn't bring in a magazine page now or if you didn't, if you uh, had a collage where you only challenged yourself to use one page from a magazine, you couldn't use the whole book, you couldn't use the whole magazine, you had to only use one page, then you'd really have to look at all the things, all those clippings, right? When I was cutting out um, the C from my collage, all of a sudden, if this was a magazine page and this was the object that I want and I cut that out, this now becomes a shape, right? And if this was water or if this were, these were trees, normally we just throw that out, but all of a sudden we have all these extra shapes and textures and colors that we can check out. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna bring this piece into my collage. And since I cut it earlier, I feel good doing that. And if you want to add more pieces after you're done ripping, you don't have to just use the ones that you found. You could grab, um, you could cut out new pieces or you could get a, a, a page out of a magazine. And don't forget, as you're, as you're doing this, you can totally bring in pencil crayons, right? You can be coloring um, and adding to your collage as you go along. And because we're not gluing anything down, you can move things after you start. Right? There's really there's really no rules when we don't have to glue it down and make it permanent. Whatever we find is going to be great. Okay, once again, I'm going to turn off my voice for a little bit while I look at all the pieces that I have here and I'm going to create a new picture and I encourage you to do the same thing. You want to rip, you want to keep cutting, you can keep cutting. And you can do both, right? I'm ripping and I'm cutting. There is no right or wrong way to get these shapes out of the page. If you've got a different way besides ripping and cutting, I'd love to, I'd love to know. How do you get your pictures off of the page you just drew so you can reuse them? different shapes, right? It doesn't have to be the shape that you drew. We cut through it. Because it's not glued down, you can put things on different layers, right? You can put things behind, you can put things in front that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do if you were gluing it down.
always so curious what you are making at home or at, um, during your art making sessions or when you go over to a friend's house. And so if you have permission, I would love, I would love to see what you are making. So please, um, if you have permission, feel free to either share it with us on Facebook, send us a, an email, you can find us on Instagram, um, but for all of those things, you're going to want to make sure that you have permission from um, your guardian or your parent before you upload anything. Um, and you know what? You don't even have to share the exact thing that you finish. You could just send us a note that says that you tried it, and I'd love to hear about it, right? You just tell me about it. Okay, there we go. So from my garden, I made um, a little kitchenette where you've got the floor mats where you're sitting at the table. You've got some kind of salad made out of maybe it's a flower salad. I don't know. There was a flower outside in the garden, which you can see through this circle shaped window. And then the room has been illuminated by, a, um, by the lamp at the top. So that was me taking one picture and morphing it or changing it into another one. And this is a form of collage. And so now, if I really liked this, but not this week, but if I liked this and I wanted to try this again in the future, what I could do is, okay, well, I'm just trying and I don't really have time right now to make this or to glue it down. I could just make notes so that the next time I wanted to make a collage, I could remember what I did. And so this ends up being a great tool for something called prototyping. And prototyping is when you try a thing before you're ready to make it. This is a way for you to really learn um, before you start committing to something. So uh, learning shapes, whether or not they work together, trying out different colors before you have to buy a whole bunch of materials that might not work. Um, look at shapes in a way that you wouldn't have necessarily looked at them the first time. Um, quickly decide things that won't work or quickly get the opinions of other people. So maybe you're going to be making a card uh, for somebody um, and you and your sibling have decided that you're going to make a card together and so you just want to quickly show them a bunch of ideas before you make something and it's all finished and then you find out oh no that's not that's not something that they felt comfortable doing as well but if you did a whole bunch of really quick ones to begin with then you both can agree on all the things that you liked before you make your final version and that's just not that's not just for families and for siblings um, adults do this all the time when they start to uh, try different projects, when they have, um, when there's a visual component, but also if they're making um, a presentation or if they have to um, design an office plan or maybe they're, uh, they're uh, redesigning the house at home, then they can quickly cut out pieces of paper that represent the sofa or represent um, the fridge in the kitchen and then move it around um, a, a frame, right? Move it around a piece of paper to see what it looks like in those different orientations. And that's, that's all part of this, right? There you go. Okay, so I have a version here. So now when I go like this, and I put this all away because I was just trying things out, maybe I put this in my sketchbook. Maybe I take a picture of this. Maybe I put it up on the fridge to remind myself the next time I'm going to do this, I can now take this sketch and I can try and rebuild something. I can cut out the pieces very specifically, or I could go and start looking for um, magazines or different pieces of paper and start cutting them out in those shapes so that I can recreate what I did here with those fast pieces of paper that, um, that looks more uh, finished and how I want it to look. So it's a great tool for prototyping or trying before you decide to do the finished product. Okay, so we have about five minutes left. So the last thing that I wanted to do was I wanted us to, to do some deep looking at shapes. And so I'm going to bring my collage word back out again. I'll move this paper to the side. And we're going to do some deep looking at shapes. So for this, because I, I wrote these myself, I already, I really, um, I, I know that this is a circle. I know that this is a C shape. Um, and so it's pretty easy for me because I made these, um, and that's a great thing about being able to, to make them yourself. But if you were pulling them out of a magazine, right, 
if we have a goal in mind, we want to have somebody with curly hair, or we want to have a pine tree, then if we just rush into it and we just cut out the pine tree, then we're missing a whole bunch of things. We're missing potentially how the shape of the pine tree um, was, how it grew. Um, maybe it's got a kind of funny curve to it. Maybe it's been squished up between two other trees. Um, and when we just quickly cut those things out, it can look really unfinished when we're making a collage because we haven't really looked at the shape of an object before we've isolated it and pulled it out. So this was great because I, I took different pieces of paper to do this. And so it's really easy for me to isolate the shapes. But what if this had been one piece of paper? What if this was one drawing and I had to cut out each of these, these pieces? What would I be cutting out? What would I be taking, um, to, uh, cutting away when I did it like this, right? So here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna layer these a little bit. All right, so let's say this is the size of the page that I'm working with. And so I have to layer these pieces on top of each other to be able to make them fit in the page. And you know what, I'm gonna make this even clearer by getting some tape. And I'm gonna mark out my frame. So we need to keep the page within, or sorry, keep the word collage within this size. And I love doing this. If you have um, access to tape, um, and uh, you have permission from the person who bought it to make a square on the, on the floor or in your art play area that becomes a square that you're challenged to do collage in. And you do it multiple times, right? You could do it on a piece of paper that you bring out all the time. You could do it on the floor. You could do it on the wall, if, again, if you have permission. Um, and then you always have to challenge yourself to work within that space. And that can be easier than a piece of paper, especially um, if you don't have a lot of paper to work with or if you don't have a lot of space. Marking out um, with tape on the wall gives you this nice little art space that you can try sticking things up and um, trying out or prototyping before you're finished. Okay, so I only have this small space and these are the pieces that I cut out. And now I'm now because of how I cut them out, because I didn't really think about it beforehand, and now I've got all these spaces that are covering and maybe, uh, maybe I'm not a huge fan of that. If I had stuck these down, if I had started with the C, because we um, in uh, English and French we read from left to right, um, if I had started by sticking down the C, and then the O, and then the L, and then the A, and then the G, and then the E, right? Look at, I've, I've completely covered that first L just so that I can fit it in the page. And this is where the planning is really great, right? Because if I had started sticking it, here, this is the other thing that could happen. If I had started to stick down my collage, so these are glued down, I can't move them now. Glued down, we're using our imagination. Glued down, glued down. Oh no, oh no, there's no room for the E. I mean, there's really no room for the E. This is why it's so important when we start collecting all of these objects that we really put the glue to the side and we really look at the shape and we think about how we want to lay out all of our collage before we get started. And this is, this is a great example of how art helps you learn to do problem solving. So the problem that we have is we need to fit all of these letters into this page and we can't change the size of the page. The teacher gave you this size of paper. And this is the paper that you have to work with. This is the paper that they had at the art store. This is the paper that you could afford. This is the paper that you could find in the recycling bin. For whatever reason, you can't get more paper. This is the size of the paper. So the problem that we have to solve, because it is a solvable problem. It isn't, oh, well, we can't do it. We give up. Nope, we're never gonna do a collage again because we don't have a, a big enough piece of paper. Instead, the question becomes, what can we do to problem solve, to fix this problem and get all the letters to fit on this page? And so we can really look at it and go, okay, well, this, 
this shape is round, and this shape is round, and this shape is round, and this shape is round. Oh, and the two shapes on the outside edge are both round. So what if I was to attack this problem by starting with my round shapes and positioning those without the glue still, Oh, oh, still not enough. Bring it over a little bit more. Okay, well, what about, what if I don't have to do it in a straight line? What if some of the pieces came high? And some of the pieces were low. Room to spare. Can you still read that? Does that still read C O L L A G E? It may be really difficult. When you're looking at this, just the moving it up and down, just because we've got it left to right doesn't mean that this is clear. And you, your eyes can tell you, right? Um, you'll know if something is readable or is or is something that is clear. Um, but you want to take it a step further and you want to think about the other people who are going to be looking at your final drawing. Will it be clear to them? So in this stage, again, before we've even glued anything down, now is a great chance to ask your siblings, ask your parents and guardians, ask your teachers, ask your best friends. Um, if your parents want to take a, um, or if um, you have a guardian who has access to a phone, uh, who can take a picture and then text it to a friend or text it to somebody else, ask them. Because remember, a, a camera or a phone becomes another way that you can look through your viewfinder. And then that picture, when you send it off to somebody and you can ask them what they, they think, they're not, they're not seeing any of the other stuff around. They're just seeing your framed work. And that can be really useful to get feedback. Okay, so that was collage Part one of two, we tried um, we tried to uh, work with ready-mades this week. So we found objects around um, the house or the classroom, and then we made them into a, um, an assemblage where we put things together. We also cut up one of our own pictures, and we did a uh, we did a picture morph from one picture to the other, and then we did some problem solving and deep looking at shapes and planning before we ever glued anything down so that we could be problem solvers. Next week, I'm going to be continuing the workshop on the, uh, on the subject of collage. We're gonna be looking at both magazines, because I did refer to magazines quite a bit this week, so we are gonna cut out some pages from a magazine. So if you're joining us next week um, and you're gonna join us for 11, you can bring some uh, magazine pages with you. And we're also gonna be looking at music, so specifically percussion, collage and visual art doesn't just have to be for what you uh, is for visual art for making art it can also be for music um, sound and percussion and so we're going to try that for collage next week so as always I'm going to leave the feed on for an extra five minutes while I clean up that is your opportunity to ask Leah any questions that you might have share any of the work that you're finishing up right now um, ask any questions that I can answer once the feed is over um, and I hope you will join us next Saturday at 11 a.m. Um, for Collage Part 2. Thank you so much.